This group of houses with fields all around is called a village. Years ago, before there were towns and cities, almost everyone lived in a village. In some villages, life is still much the same as it was a hundred years ago. Villages are usually quieter than a town. There are not so many buses and cars. Can you hear that bell? Where do you think these children are going? They're going to school. Lots of village schools have a bell like this one to tell the children when school begins and ends. Going to school is fun when you have a stile to climb or a stream to cross. These children are learning all about their village. They're drawing pictures of some of the buildings and interesting things that you can see there. This boy is drawing the village pump. Years ago, everyone in the village came to get their water from this pump. There were no taps. You had to pump the water up from a well. Some of the children are learning about the village church. The church is often the oldest building in a village. The post office is not like a town or city one. It's just a room in one of the small cottages. Before clocks were invented, people used to tell the time by a sundial. The post office has a sundial over the porch. In many villages, there's one big house called a manor house. These children are making a picture of the one in their village. They've cut a picture in lino and now they're taking a print. The picture looks very like the real house, doesn't it? There are lots of things for the children to learn about their village. Lots of the houses have roofs thatched with straw. The straw is cut into different patterns. The man who makes the straw roofs is called a thatcher. His father and grandfather were thatchers too. Sometimes a thatched roof has to be repaired like this one. The new straw is put into place carefully. All the straws lie the same way. The straw is held in place by wooden pegs. The thatcher pats the straws with a wooden bat to make them firm. This man is a wood carver. He's carving a fox's head for the handle of a walking stick. He makes them from pieces of wood like these. 
He carves them and then paints them to look like animals or birds. Here are some of the ones he's finished. This is the blacksmith in his workshop. This horse has come to have a new shoe. First, the blacksmith cuts a piece of iron. Then he heats the straight piece of iron in the furnace. To make the fire burn red hot, air is pumped into the furnace. A wooden handle is moved up and down to pump air from the bellows. When the metal is red hot, the blacksmith can start to hammer it into horseshoe shape. He makes holes for nails to go through. Further up the street, the saddler is working. He makes leather saddles and bridles for horses. He stitches the pieces of leather together with strong thread. Years ago, when the horses were used for work on the farms, he was one of the busiest men in the village. Nowadays, not many villages have craftsmen like the saddler and the blacksmith. The blacksmith has nearly finished the horseshoe. Each one must be specially shaped to fit the horse. The blacksmith works slowly and carefully. Listen to the different noises in the blacksmith's forge. When it's finished, the horseshoe looks like this. Now it's ready to be fitted. Shoeing doesn't hurt a horse. Nails hold the shoe firmly onto the horse's foot. Hello, what does this notice say? Slow down, ducks crossing. Perhaps things don't move so quickly in a village as they do in town, but there are lots of interesting things to stop, look at and listen to.